Hey, I hope that you are doing well. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about being inspired and motivated creatively when things change drastically or maybe not so drastically as the case may be. For those of you who have been following along um, and for those of you who are new, I guess I'll update just a little. Um, my dad was diagnosed with severe aggressive cancer in his pelvic region a few weeks ago, about a month ago. It's stage four. It has taken over one of his kidneys, his whole bladder, and his prostate. And he doesn't qualify for surgery because it, it's too much and it's too aggressive. He can't do regular chemo. So they have approved him finally for this new form of chemo. It's a shot you get every few weeks and it doesn't have the side effects and stuff that regular chemo does. What will happen is it will slow the cancer down. It will give him a little bit more time and better quality of life. And he's also been approved for this shot that has to do with his red blood cells because he's anemic because of that. So hopefully with the new things that they've approved and stuff, my dad will start doing a lot better because right now he gets very tired very easily. So anyway, that's been a lot. Mr. Rockstar was diagnosed with Crohn's right around the time that my dad was diagnosed with cancer. I was, But I was dealing with biopsies for both of them at the same time. And had they both been diagnosed with cancer, I think I went completely insane because I was already close to having a nervous breakdown. I took a little bit of a break from, from Patreon for just a few days and from YouTube for about a week, give or take. But having a little bit of time away and a little bit of time from social media for a few days, basically, and with everything that was going on, I had an aha moment, sort of, bordering on epiphany. And I was also doing One Book July. After talking to people, like I said, watching videos about One Book July and about creativity and watercoloring. But One Book July has really, this time around, changed things for me in a very good way. I struggled for quite a few One Book Julys to figure out how to get one, just one book how to do everything for the most part, except my writing stuff in one book. All the planning, all the journaling, I had the Omni Journal, I was pretty much doing everything in the Omni Journal, and I can do it, and I like it, but I go through a ton of notebooks very quickly. So, I decided to go back to my journals. This One Book July was Go Big or Go Home, and I really wanted to go big or go home. I wanted to change things up. I wanted to use all of my traveler's notebooks, my notebook covers. I wanted to get back to my journals and doing what I do best, which is a lot of different things, my hand and a whole lot of coffee cups. That was the thing that really sort of resonated the most with me was my journals. The, I am like a journal fanatic. I love journals. I love Janelle Fish. I love art. I love color. Love, 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 love color. I am addicted to yeah, all kinds of arty, creative, stationary kind of things. So I said, you know, there has to be a way to kind of use my journals to make the most of what I really have and what I really love. And I have done that. I started out in the Hobonichi for planning, soon realized that I had dumped so much color on the page, I could not focus. Any other time, I wouldn't have loved to have had all this color on the page. I started writing down things I'm grateful for. So here's what it looks like without anything on there. And it's gorgeous. And I was doing planning. And at the very beginning of July, like, here we go. And writing down some quotes. Nothing major. Well, that lasted until about the 10th. And then I started using the Breeze, which is my commonplace journal, where I wrote evening pages, research notes, ideas, stuff on books, like sketch notes, kind of things I'm reading on books. I do like sketch notes. So I started bullet journaling in the Breeze, which is by Tarugo Design. It has Tomoho River paper in it. <laughs> and my love of Tomoho River paper is just absolutely fanatical, sort of. I love the 68 GSM, but I have always loved the Hobonichi. I know it gets chunky, I know it does, and I know it gets heavy, and I love, love, love the sound of the paper. There's something, I like drawing out the things in the bullet journal, I really do, but I need something more structured, I really do. Um, I grow a little uh, 
after a while of bullet journaling when I'm having to draw out everything. But so I thought, you know, I bet you I could do this in a way that makes sense to me. I had a subscriber on YouTube tell me they had, I guess they had gotten an extra cousin for the spring edition. They wanted to know if I wanted it since I was having so much trouble with the stuff in this one. Um, in the front of it with all the color and I'm like of course yes I'd love I'd love a spring edition I've taken this one out of here because the spring edition that she's sending me should be here in about a week this one is going to go back to putting personal stuff in it, stuff I want to write or journal about that I don't want on social media because the spring edition Hobonichi that's going to go on YouTube I'm going to start showing my planning and my daily journaling here so this is going to be like my personal stuff. So I'm probably going to go back to the Snoopy cover for this one because it's my, going to be my personal stuff. What I wanted to talk about today, because I'm going through One Book July, and we're talking morning pages, and we're talking my journal. And I have been truly inspired by this book, by Kathy Johnson's Artist Journal Workshop. I am on her Facebook group. I've been following Instagram. I've been following her on YouTube. I want to take her class, her watercolor class. I want to take Liz Steele's watercolor class. They're both a little pricey. I can't afford to. Those are on my wish list. I've been very inspired by that, by a lot of this stuff lately. When I first started thinking about doing sketching, like watercolor sketchbook, an urban sketch date, I thought, oh, I don't know if I can do this, y'all. I don't, I don't know if I can, I can do it on the fly so quick. And I started, and then I went with Mr. Rockstar. We were at the hospital, and I did this, and I roughened up the paper because sometimes I overwork it. I have too much water or press too hard, I'm too rough. Well, then I started thinking, well, I'll just use this for like mixed media stuff. But then the more I thought about it, because it's kind of sad over here for the rest of July, and I'm thinking, you know, this should not be work. It should not be anything that makes me go, uh, you know? So I was making it too complicated. I've decided to start using this for fun, for collage work, for just fun sketching like with pen and ink, um, pencil sketches, um, graphite sketches, some light watercolor washes. I'm going to try because I shouldn't be afraid. It's just pencil. It's just paper. It's just ink. It's just watercolor. It's just pencils. Yeah, I said that I think already, but it's just art. It's not like life or death. It's just art. So no more being afraid. I've done some fun things in this. I did a camera. I'm not quite sure what this was. I think I was doing the sun and the moon. It didn't turn out very well. I'm going to go back to having fun with the watercolor sketchbook. I'm changing things up. This is the commonplace idea, thought, notes, and what I've been doing in bullet journaling. And I'm going to continue to do the bullet journaling in here until I get the Hobonichis and then I will use it and this will continue to be my commonplace idea, thought, notes. Over the next few weeks you're going to see some change and I'll tell you why. I've been putting a lot more personal stuff in here. I am a patron of Romani and Courtney Diaz. Courtney's Little Raven Inc. and Romani's from Romani's Realm. Romani did a template of a face and she kind of left the background like really lightly of where she would put the hair that you know the top of the head and the, the neck and stuff and he used that template to draw this face I have a lot of trouble with faces and some symmetry and I'm learning and this turned out really well um, because I used her face template to draw from and I kind of did the paying attention to the lines and the I did the thumb method and then you know it, it helped like how much space was between and where they were at and I drew light pencil lines and then used and then I used the pilot color red you know pilot color you know red pencil to actually draw her and then I did ink 
Um, I did I did ink after I did her face. I did the pencil and then I did watercolor and then I did ink. As you can tell, there's no ink around her hair really. There's a little bit of ink here and some ink in her face. I wanted to do something different, but I will tell you one of the things. Romney's video about her wrap up for One Book July and stuff. I used to draw with pen. I used to use my platinum carbon fountain pen to draw with because it's like drawing with a pencil or a paintbrush because it's longer. I like the way that you can hold it. I like the extra fine nib for drawing with. I like drawing with pen. I like drawing with these colored pencils too. They are water soluble. If you use a color, they kind of leave that hue though in your work. So you have to be careful about what color you're going to use. I use the red because I knew I was doing sort of a self portrait. Her hair's not as curly, but that's okay. Curly hair is really hard to do without too much drawing. I decided while I was doing that, when I watched Romney's video, I've been ready, ready to go back to drawing with pen, ready to, because I feel more confident when I draw with a pen, but I get so much anxiety when I'm drawing, when I know what I'm filming, it's anxiety, it's nervousness, because I'm scared that the ink is going to go out of the pen, or that I'm going to break it, or that, <laughs> you know, something disastrous is going to happen, and I've got to quit that. I, I have to, because I actually do better when I draw with a pen because I hold the pen with more confidence. When I'm doing a pencil sketching, I do a lot more lines and I do a lot more things because I'm second guessing myself because I can't erase. So with a pen, you can't erase. Well, I can. I have one of those Faber-Castell ink erasers, but it's not a good idea because it roughens up your paper. I said, you know what? It's time. It's time. It's, I, it is time. And one of the things that I wrote down in my journal, this was for Thursday's page, is don't be afraid of losing people. Be afraid of losing yourself by trying to please everyone around you. I decided that I'm do doing a lot more personal stuff in here. So I am much more personal, much more intimate and vulnerable on Patreon. Right now I have a small following on Patreon and um, I'm doing this video as a video in video for them. There's a journal with me of the where I created the face and stuff. But what I've learned in One Book July is that I am not afraid anymore. After the last few weeks, this with stuff with my dad and stuff with David, with Mr. Rockstar, it's turned my world upside down. Patreon helps keep me in supplies to continue to do things and to do more things for YouTube, to do some reviews, to try some new things. But because I have such a small following on Patreon, it's more personal and they have become my tribe. Just as a lot of you who have been following me for a very long time are part of my tribe. I've had several of you email me, private message me, and I cannot explain how much all of that touched me, how very blessed and appreciative I feel. But taking a step back for a minute made me realize, for me, this with YouTube. I started YouTube for the writing, for NaNoWriMo stuff, and continued because people were like, no, keep doing videos. So I do YouTube for, for y'all. I don't do YouTube for me. I enjoy making the videos, but I don't do YouTube for me. I do YouTube for y'all. The coffee chats, and stuff. It's a way to chronicle my journey because I am a work in progress. Just like my journals and my writing, all my creative endeavors are a work in progress. And this is a way to chronicle my creativity, my life, my works in progress. But I can just as soon do videos and put them on a disc to save for posterity's sake, you know, but I want to do YouTube. I want to continue to help inspire people. I want to motivate others to pick up a journal, to pick up a pen and draw, to pick up a pen and write, to do something out of their comfort zone. But my big thing um, is that when, when I think about some of the things 
for YouTube or even for Patreon or for the Facebook groups. I have often not talked about certain things or I've often not shared because I didn't want to rock the boat. I've not shared um, as much on YouTube as I could have because of criticism. When I'm struggling with something creatively with my writing or with art or um, with a lot of different things with depression anxiety I've shared some but if I'm thinking out loud because here I'm thinking out loud here because this is off the cuff this is not scripted or anything if I'm thinking about something that is bothering me felt that self-doubt because I'm comparing myself to others if I have felt the depression the depression really heavy on my psyche because of everything I've been going through and I've been fighting with anxiety and depression how hard it's been to create art how hard it's been to write how hard it's been to just get up in the morning and go about my day to get out of the bed to take a shower to get dressed um, there have been some days over the past few weeks where it's just those basic mundane things much less to create art have been extremely hard. What has motivated me is accountability. What has motivated me is that Patreon, those people pay me to create, to share, to, yeah, I held myself accountable. So even if I didn't feel like, even if I did not feel like creating a journal page, I knew I had to do something. I knew I had to do something. And when I got back to doing things, I started with planning because you know, as a journaler at heart, in order to do some things, I was like, okay, I need to have a plan. I need to have a plan. My ADHD needed to plan. <laughs> you need to plan really bad. What happened is that I got back with Shark Week. My husband would be so glad when Shark Week is over, y'all. So I've been watching shark movies and shark documentaries and the little clips for Shark Week on Facebook's, um, Shark Week's Facebook group and stuff. And I think my husband's like all shark out. <laughs> but I started with something that was fun and, and something that I could do sort of in my sleep, which were draw shark things, and, you know. And I continued from there. And I started doing my journal pages again. And I did some daily pages in the Hobonichi that were really back to kind of where I started from. Nothing major. Originally... I was inspired to document my day, to chronicle my day via quite a few people on YouTube. I was inspired by Courtney and by Romani and by Miss Vicki B, by the Fobonichi Journalers Group and by all the people like My Life Mitts and Palest Blue who were sharing their Hobonichi pages. The Hobonichi will always be my first love when it comes to a way to chronicle your day. I have my issues with the Hobonichi. I flip flop back and forth between daily journaling and only having one page per day and not having enough space and how if it were set up <laughs> differently in the back, it would be the perfect journal. But at the same time, I can understand how if it did that, it would be even bigger, it would be even thicker. I think if the ABEC for the cousin were set up with additional pages in the back, like the weeks is, it, the perfect journal except that now I've fallen in love with the Taroka Designs Enigma and Breeze and I've decided that when the Enigma that I'm using now for this journal is full I will be using the Breezes for my journals and I will be using the Enigma they have the same paper the Breeze is half the size like I talked about before I will be using the Enigma for a commonplace journal, for sketch notes and ideas and thoughts and things, or for bullet journal collections and all that kind of stuff, because I am going to be using the Hobonichi for planning and for daily journaling. And then I will use the, the Enigma will be commonplace, sort of, that kind of thing. And then the Breeze will actually be my daily journal because it is half the size. I will use a few more of those. But this is where, in the daily journal, my life journal, is what I think I'm going to start calling it. It's my life journal. I heard that term somewhere, and I don't know where I heard it. Um, it's the same thing as what she's talking about here, an artist journal. And I'm going to 
I'll have a lot more personal stuff in there. And then last but not least, and then the Hogan YouTube will be for public consumption because I will most, every now and again I can show you stuff in here. I will put stuff in here on Instagram before I put the, the text in there. But the only place this is really going to be shown in any depth or detail is on Patreon. The Hogan YouTube will be shown on both YouTube and Patreon, but I needed a way to, to differentiate um, what I'm doing on Patreon. Patreon gets much more detailed stuff, much more personal, intimate stuff. And then this is my spiritual bullet journal slash journal. Um, I'm going to, my daily routine is about to change. I'm going to be getting up in the mornings and doing morning pages and doing stretches and, and meditation. And then I'm going to do a daily tarot pull and that will go in here. I'm going to start using the oracle cards and the blessing cards and the things like that. I'm going to do one card from each and they'll be, they'll be going in here. This, which is housing the breeze right now, will eventually house my life journal. And this will eventually house my commonplace journal. So these will be switching around eventually. I would love to try Sojourner's leather. I have been seeing so much of it, thank you Courtney, that I really want to try one of hers. So when I do have some extra money, I'm going to be trying one of hers. You know that A5 and the red leather with the, with the pocket on the front, that dark kind of red. It's, it's like it's like almost like these colors, like these colors. That's on my that's on my wish list. Is one of the Sojourners Traveler's Notebooks because Janelle's are my art, my fun, my love. You know, I love color and I love Janelle's artwork. I like her regular artwork. Her, if you've never checked out her blog. She does Comic Con and stuff like that. She actually does commission artwork. I don't have a painted Traveler's Notebook by her yet with some and I'm going to get one. So that's One Book July has taken me full circle between the One Book Julys. I have kind of come around full circle. I don't know that I will ever go back to one journal. And for those of you who have fallen in love with the Omni Journal, I understand why I do. But I write so much and I write so big and I put so much that they I use them too fast. I use them too fast when I use only one journal. And the only other complaint that I have about that is I really have to tab stuff and I really have to pay attention to the index because if I'm looking for something specific in such a thick, chunky notebook and so many notebooks, like say I did something in January and now it's right at August and that notebook is already filed away, I've got to go back searching. I, okay, and then I have to remember which journal it was in and I don't want to have to go through that. I'm changing things up to be more convenient to work smarter not harder for myself and that is what one book july has really taught me go big or go home has really taught me to be true to thine own self to do what makes you happy and what brings you joy and to not worry about what others think or what other people are using to truly do what works for you because i watched romani's video from this morning about her final thoughts on One Book July and I understood exactly what she meant about the notebook and it getting chunky on one side. I've been through that myself which is why I will be switching to um, using the breeze for my life journal and the enigma for my commonplace journal because if I use it as a commonplace journal I may, I may actually end up eventually switching to just using the breezes but anyway I understood exactly what she meant but I I'm not an insert person. I never have really been an insert person. I like notebooks. And yeah, I like the chunkiness of the notebook. But I understood exactly what you meant, what she meant. Because when you start writing, for example, this is the Hogan YouTube. And where I'm at right now is right here. Okay, so when I start writing, and this is where start, some of these pages are, are only planning, so they don't have actual artwork on them. So when I'm on this side, See how chunky this side is? When you're laying it flat, when you're working on this side, you can flip it over and do it like that, you know? And that, that makes it easier. But if you're actually in something that's not a home engine, that's not one day per page and you're doing the whole you can put a notebook under the side that's skinnier, but sometimes it's a pain in the ass, you know? 
So I understood exactly what she meant. And I'm shaking my head going, yes, yes. And then she's talking about the inserts. And I'm like, that's fantastic if you like inserts. But if you're like me and you don't like inserts, it's the notebook. So the breeze is perfect for me. 183 pages. Hello. So yeah, I haven't completely made up my mind because I have all of this enigma. But what has me thinking is between now and when I get the Hoganichi in, I may be doing much more in this than I have been. Much more in this because I've actually started doing text journaling um, over watercolor. I'm adding more tippins. I'm doing more artwork. It doesn't take me very long at all to fill up a notebook. It doesn't take me very long. I may start adding things in here that aren't like date related that I just kind of want to do. I haven't made up my mind. Some of that I'm still working on. That's one of the things I wanted to talk about since it's time to wrap up One Book July. And I hope that you enjoy this. And I will talk with you soon, as soon as some things come in that I will be working on. I have some surprises that are going to come in. And I will let y'all know. Yeah, I'll do some videos. I'll show you what, what's coming in. Bye, y'all.